don't know the answer. But it perhaps is telling. Now, with that, I want to just shift into just the closing thoughts about this as it relates to the rapture, as it relates to, you know, all the things that are coming upon the earth. You know, I just want to emphasize the importance of knowing the Word of God. We must know the Word of God. If we don't know the Word of God, if we haven't read it for ourselves, then we have no idea how we're supposed to live our lives, what it truly means to live like you truly believe. Scripture says, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart, you will be saved. And that is as simple as it gets. However, we cannot overlook the truth of what real belief is and what it really means to believe. I believe that many appear in their daily life to be believing, but yet when it comes to the hard parts, when it comes to sacrifice, when it comes to the part of that walk that would be difficult, that would require relinquishing some element of self or some element of dreams or wealth or any of the things that we are enticed by, by Satan and by the lusts and the desires and the flesh that Satan is constantly appealing to us with in our life. If we are living and walking and obeying the voice of Satan, it's very possible that we claim to be a believer and we're really not a believer. The Bible says you cannot serve more than one master. It is that simple. You cannot serve God and money. And yet there are so many people, my friends, so many people that go to church and volunteer their time and give some portion of their money. They might even tithe a full 10%. But what do we see in the word? We see Jesus saying of the woman who put in a couple of coins or a coin that she gave more than anyone else had. And so it really has to do with your heart. It really has to do with living the word of God. I mean, in every way, as it relates to your money, as it relates to your healing. We live in a world where there's so much deception, and I've been speaking on this subject for a long time as it relates to the perilous poison, you know, the perilous poke, the fact that that was 110% an idol, a worldwide idol. And Christians all over the world had no trouble, no problem at all bowing down to it. You know, when we get sick, what do we do? We run to a doctor. Now, I'm not here to slander doctors. Luke was the beloved physician. But I do want to challenge you to know that what that means today and what that meant then was totally different. Totally different. Big Pharma is not a miracle from God. That is a deception. Yeah, it may give us something, but it's also going to take something else. You know, it might help in one area, but it's going to cause problems in another. That is not the healing that comes from the Lord. That is not true, God-given, miraculous healing. When we look in the Word of God, what does it say about the healing? How does it say it happens? Well, in two ways. It says that we do the hands of one another, and it says that as it relates to trees, the fruit shall be your food, and the leaves shall be from your healing. Nature, the things that God created, not the things that man created with their hands. But I'll tell you this, you cannot make a million dollars on things that the Lord created. No, you can't patent these things. You can't make this engine, this machine that is essentially fueling our entire economy and our world. You can't do all of those things with nature and what God provides. And interestingly enough, if you know, if you've been researching it, you will know that literally the companies are pulling out the supplement companies and most of the supplements that are supposed to be natural are actually made to be identical but you know what? and what does that sound like and who does that sound like the counterfeit the angel of life known as satan the poser 
And so I'm just here to challenge you, my friends, to challenge you to the word, to challenge you to search your heart, to seek out the Lord, to call on him in this moment, in this day, and ask him, Lord, show me any darkness, show me my disbelief. I want to believe, Lord, but help me in my disbelief. And he will show you, my friends, but first and foremost, you have got to see him where he can be found, and that is in the beautiful word of God, the word that was from the beginning and was with God and was God and is the ultimate manifestation of Jesus Christ himself, who is the word. You have to know the word in order to know the heart of God, in order to know Jesus. And it is for this reason, my friends, that I have a serious burden on my heart. And I just ask you, I ask you as we are waiting, through these last days. I mean, obviously we are in the end days and nobody knows how much time we have left, whether it's the rapture comes, the Lord comes for us as well, or it's actually the day the Lord calls us individually home. As a believer, when you're standing before God, would you want to feel like you on some level have some clue who he is and what he's about and what's important to him? Or would it be sufficient for you to stand before the Lord? as someone who has no concept at all of what can be found in his words. You know, my only regret personally is that I didn't start studying the scriptures sooner in my life. I wish that I had been pouring myself into them from an early age, but here's the deal. We cannot regret these things because God's timing is perfect, but yet I tell you the time is now. Sleepers, wake up. If you've been deceived by these false doctrines that tell you that no effort is required, if you think that you can stand in front of God and enter the gates of heaven, having just claimed a name, but walked in sin and lived a life that is an abomination to the Lord, never having sought him, never having desired to know him, then you need to wake up, my friends. And so with that, I'm going to leave you. I hope this message was not only an encouragement, but I just pray in Jesus' holy name that this message will light a fire inside of many of you to seek him, to have that desire. I pray that even now as you're watching and hearing these words, that you will lift your hands to heaven and pray that the Lord will lead you in accordance to his truth in these last days. Until next time. May the Lord bless you and guide you and fill you with his perfect grace overflowing. Folks, welcome here. Greetings to all of you. Uh, I want to bring to your attention on the Times of Israel an article that just came out uh, of what is happening within Israel at this particular time. Now, I'm about ready to give you, it's like, you know, three hours old. Uh, so it may be updated a little bit <clears throat> since then. What happened was, and this is significant, folks, because what I have been saying, and this is the reason why this is significant, is that Israel will lead up to a point to where something will happen to where it will be necessary for God to step in. And when he does, he's going to do it in a way to clear Israel's surrounding enemies, to get rid of them in such a way that Israel would be allowed to build a temple. Folks, that is just obvious, plain, and simple scripture. Daniel 9.27. If you read in the middle of that last seven years, Satan enters into a temple and desecrates it. A temple must be built. Israel needs to build one. And we have a conflict of interest over the territory of where the temple would be built and that is in its way is the mosque if the palestinians are eliminated the arab the muslim arabs are removed from the surrounding area of israel that mosque will not be needed anymore and then israel can build that temple there folks that is Simple scripture that I have been going over that since day one. Um, speaking of me from day one and this site, uh, I'm going to go over towards the end of the video. 
more of what I was led to understand. But let me get back into this article again. So what has happened here, and this is reaching a new height, a new level, and let me explain to you here. I'm going to show you here. I have it um, right here. And you're going to say, well, Ross, this has happened before. This happens a lot. But, but let me show you here. So it, it says, again, this is like three hours, maybe a little over three hours old. One killed is the terror.